So this uh, first case, um, these are Angiovac cases, and for those of you that are not familiar with uh, Angiovac, um, basically this for me has helped remove a lot of decision making in uh, this particular class of patient when I get the phone call in the middle of the night at two o'clock in the morning, massive PE, patient still alive, dilated right heart, what do we do? And um, uh, at first, when uh, the technology was out, because we weren't um, checked off on it, so to speak, it was kind of an ordeal to get set up, shipment in, uh, clinical um, instructors here. So now that we've done quite a few cases, uh, we have it on the shelf and uh, several perfusionists that are uh, adept at starting this up, especially since we do quite a bit of ECMO. So. Um, in this, so we'll start with this first case. This is uh, uh, actually started, this te technology started with a couple of friends of mine um, that I trained with down at Texas Heart, just the idea of it. Um, and, uh, and since then it's advanced into this wonderful piece of technology that has really added to better patient outcomes, the ones you can operate on for massive PE or right heart uh, disease. Uh, such as catheter-related infections, mobile uh, endocarditic valves of the tricuspid, pulmonary, et cetera. And um, so let's go to the cases. So this first case, 36-year-old uh, male presented with tachycardia. Uh, he was 6'5", 350 pounds, and it was not a distributed 350 pounds. It was all truncal. Um, so he was a big guy. So we know how those go um, as far as their recovery afterwards uh, from a sternotomy. Uh, his most recent history was within the past month. He had had uh, septic left shoulder arthritis um, and uh, had to have it drained. Well, he was being treated in preparation for future orthopedic surgery and had a PICC line in place and just presented not feeling well and had tachycardia. Well, he had a atrial fibrillation by echocardiogram um, and by EKG. Well, they got an echocardiogram which showed um, a large whipping uh, mass that was about a centimeter in diameter and basically like a snake uh, flipping in and out of the tricuspid valve. Likely catheter associated. Uh, because he was on antibiotics, it was not an infected uh, catheter, but um, I suspect with his atrial fibrillation, um, probably because of just being ill and large and overweight, um, and being stressed uh, that contributed to his uh, thrombus formation. So he's already kind of a uh, hypercoagulable setup to begin with. So I was consulted. He was in the hospital three days prior to surgery. Um, long story short, prep for surgery, uh, including uh, cardiopulmonary bypass uh, to include a cardiotomy with mass removal. The plan was, however, obviously to do the Angiovac, which return flows through a small arterial cannula in the femoral vein, and obviously you got to check venous dopplers of both lower extremities to figure out which one uh, is accessible. And if those aren't accessible because you got DVTs in both of those, you got to talk about another inflow area, um, such as the maybe the left internal jugular vein or subclavian or some other uh, area. So next slide. So this is uh, in, in preparation for uh, placing the angiovac. You have to have fluoroscopy. Uh, you can see the um, uh, uh, TEE probe already down. He's prepped out just like you would say for an isolated aortic valve or mitral valve, except you got to expose the neck a little bit because um, that's going to be your return, I mean, your uh, inflow cannula to the uh, ECMO circuit. Basically, it's an ECMO circuit, and that's the way we prepare it. And I think, did we talk about that in the previous? We uh, did. So we're prepared for VA ECMO in case this, God forbid, breaks off or if they just need uh, full uh, cardiac support along with um, oxygenation. We can also just, if they need oxygenation, uh, convert to a VV cannula if their cardiac performance is fine and they don't need offloading. I'm gonna flip back and forth on these slides. So you can actually see the tip here of this uh, sheath. It's a 27, is that correct? Dry sheath? Yes. So you got a big hole in the IJ there. Um, and that's the radio opaque marker. It's a gore dry seal. Uh, it's a little bit long. I don't particularly care for the long ones, but that's what uh, they recommend. Uh, we do have some shorter ones uh, available. 
um, and that shows it you don't want to put it too far in which we almost did today um, because uh, we had all the lights on for filming and couldn't really see the tip of the uh, angiovac so quickly this is the tee version that's video you know you, right you got it you this got a plan. is the tee version yep david's got me set up great i don't have to think too much which is the way i like it um and let's go again play it again so you can see this uh, serpentine mobile mass in the um, right atrium into the right ventricle we um, uh, place the right femoral cannula first to return the blood flush it etc have the pump set up and then we start with the right side now the care uh, right ij the care you have to make here is and take is watching the wire making sure you don't enter the heart if you if at all possible which we did today fortunately that it, nothing broke off uh, because she was so massive do you think this guy was big this lady was 4 8 and had a bmi of 51 today so she was all uh, uh, obese above the inguinal ligament and safely put that in and now we're ready to go so we prime the uh, uh, <clears throat> inflow limb inflow limb which you've seen earlier today and then insert it through the dry sheath uh, to just where the pedals or the distal part of the angiovac come in and then we've had a case and we'll show you the next one but the you blow up using an insufflator like you use for angioplasty of stents etc and you can see it on uh, the film to open up the end to make it more receptive to clot so here's another view of it going through the tricuspid, whipping in and out, in and out. And this guy fortunately had not had a PE yet. Most of these people have had some pulmonary emboli break, um, uh, break off and or form on the end of the organized clot and give them PEs. That's how they'll usually present is short of breath or chest pain. So this is a specimen removed. Um, two large pieces you can see there are casts of uh, likely the iliofemoral system I mean not, not, not of the iliofemoral system of the catheter itself with some component um, of a probably an asgus vein or tertiary branch or secondary branch off of the superior vena cava and then the filter itself uh, after being flushed and the specimens inside When you're finished flushing and returning 95% of the blood back to the patient, again, blood conservation, we don't need to use cell saver because we basically uh, return everything back to the patient. When you finish the case, you literally pull the cannula out of the neck, make sure the dry seal, the uh, balloon's inflated in the sheath itself, and that way you don't have blood loss through the sheath while you're literally holding it up like a bong and draining it into the pump, and then they return it through the femoral access and then flush it, and then that's this part here is done on the back table uh, so you can see the specimen in the filter and remove it. All right, is this, this is the same one or is this the next case? No, it's the same one. So here's just other uh, views of that. This is afterwards. So this is a before, similar angle with the TEE, after. And so it's, it's pretty amazing too. I mean, sometimes it's like, you turn it on and where to go. I mean, it's literally that quick. Today was a little bit interesting because you could tell it had snared it because part of the cast or the clot was not moving uh, and the more distal end was, and it was a, quite a large one too because it was oh, probably yeah. in the well, shape. Cause, yeah, because uh, it was uh, the iliac vein. You can obviously tell it was the iliac vein because it was much bigger and the catheter had a hard time pulling it through, but you just got to persist. Another view, uh, more of the right ventricle pulmonary outflow, nice and clean. I've had some in the past where there was a clot on the tricuspid valve itself that was organized and you had to steer it to the annulus and get it, but uh, there's all kinds of things you can do uh, with that. So the mass and or thrombus, which is basically ended up being thrombus associated with the pick line was successfully removed. Uh, the pick line was then removed because um, you probably have a nidus still there of some sort of clot formation. Uh, need to anticoagulate the patient because uh, you still had to have long-term antibiotics. Uh, he ended up getting another one the next day. Um, and, but real briefly, as you can see here, and I showed the example of when he was admitted was the 17th, basically waiting for a product and support to do the case on the 20th, three days later, uh, and then discharged on the 22nd.
um, anticoagulated. Atrial fibrillation was corrected now that we had the clot out and we could treat him. Uh, placed on um, antibiotics and sent home. He's done well. This next case, this lady was more of what you would kind of expect. This is the other extreme of the uh, spectrum, a 48-year-old female in and out of the hospital multiple times this past uh, year early on and presented on uh, uh, May the 6th uh, with a seizure. Uh, she had been previously admitted in rehab with seizures um, and so everybody thought this was a seizure. What had happened was she was being ambulated for the first time in three weeks um, because she was so weak from uh, critical illness, polyneuropathy and her seizures, etc. And she then had a, quote, another seizure. Well, it ended up being a respiratory arrest is what it was because she had bilateral really significant PEs. Uh, her right heart is extremely dilated. Uh, there's no saddle pulmonary embolus, but um, after being transferred emergently and worked up, it, they basically worked backwards from a CNS, central nervous system workup, including MRs of the brain, scan, CTs of the brain, et cetera, to um, uh, CT scans of the chest, which show PZ, PEs, and then, then uh, working backwards an echocardi EKG and echocardiogram. Uh, she was intubated in the ED because of her seizure. She couldn't control her airway, which again was her respiratory arrest. The echo showed a severely dilated right atrium and right ventricle and another huge thrombosverse mass. We didn't really understand what it was at the time because she did have a history of some kind of remote uh, malignancy um, over about 50 to 20 years ago. Just the lady looked chronically ill. Uh, I think she had multiple sclerosis as well, a lot of different medical problems. Uh, but regardless, uh, uh, we obtained um, um, uh, the necessary instrumentation for an angiovac case. And this was at another hospital where we don't have it ready to go and available. So we actually had to, to wait a, about 36 hours, I think, to get it set up. Uh, she was stable through that. She was a, other than uh, requiring a little bit of high FO2 and um, uh, pretty aggressive fluid resuscitation and anticoagulation. Yeah, we did it on Saturday. We did it on Saturday. Um, and, uh, and the other reason we did it at that particular hospital was they were going, they could not get her transferred downtown. Mm -hmm. So at this facility, we do hearts and et cetera and ECMO. occasional ECMO, and but this uh, place, um, they acted like they were on the verge of an experimental discovery because they, they loved it because they they've never seen anything like this so mm -hmm. especially when before historically we'd open the chest to do a pulmonary embolectomy mm -hmm. or a right atrial right ventricular thrombectomy um, so she was successfully treated I won't go over the details again we'll show some slides it will show the uh, uh, how significant this thrombus was and how kind of really exciting uh, for lack of a better term, and um, treated successfully. This was the one where <laughs> we actually turned it on uh, low flow, did not open the pedals to the angiovac, and Joe started getting a little nervous because we had absolutely no flow to even start with. <laughs> and I accused him of having the pump backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Not that he's done that before. I think we have an edited video of that. Right, without the <laughs> four-letter words. Yes. Which helps us they can enjoy. And then, <laughs> uh, so literally, it, the cannula goes in, the catheter goes in, turn it on, no flow, oh. and then flow, and there's the clot. There it is. And so, I've never seen anything like it. <clears throat> it happened to us today. Well, we're all high-fiving. It was great. And uh, I'm in the, I'm Lee. I'm, I've nearly left. I think I've left the hospital. Well, they called a code because they decided to turn off all of her pressors because she was doing so well and um, instead of weaning them and getting her to the ICU, um, resuscitated her, got her back. They waited another 15 minutes and decided to turn the pressors off again because she was doing so well <laughs> and got her to the ICU this time a little bit longer and she coded again, got her back and I told them don't turn the pressors off yet. Let's kind of one thing at a time here. So uh, now this was, as you would expect, more of a typical type case with RV failure uh, or impending failure. It did take her a while to get over it. Uh, she eventually did have a small um, intracranial hemorrhage. We had to stop the anticoagulation. Um, 
Uh, once it was safe, we started again. They thought she might have anoxic encephalopathy, which, you know, neurologists, if they're not uh, in their facility, they're all, you know, brain dead anyway, mm -hmm. and refused to treat them anymore. But she eventually woke up. She had not had a significant deficit and went back to rehab and has been subsequently discharged as follow-up and recovering at home. Still a lot of outpatient uh, rehab, um, but not but from a deconditioning standpoint, not really a stroke standpoint. But she was not a, she was not the most. She was not healthy. No, 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 no. She was yeah. seriously ill. This is her. So this mm -hmm. is hers. Mm -hmm. And it looks like a ball of snakes in there. Mm -hmm. It's all, uh, as, as opposed to the other one, which kind of fo followed the catheter mm -hmm. and like a serpentine can you form. Play it, can this, you play that again? I'm, I'm playing it again. Oh, you do. Yeah, oh, I got it. You got it. Technology. I don't know what this one really wasn't going across the valve, but it was all balled up in the right, right atrium. And, and um, there's the specimen. Mm -hmm. There it is in the filter after we wash it out. Two nice chunks. We had to unwind this. It was actually in several knots. It looked like a big sailor's knot, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. it did. It kind of looked like a big, not that it was a, it had any rhyme or reason to it, but that's what it looked like. You got, we got sound? So a little bit of the procedural aspect. Uh, and today we took some video without the lights being um, dimmed. So it was a little harder to see the fluoro, fluoro today, but uh, we'll hopefully get that to you guys in a future uh, presentation. <laughs> the so the femoral line's already in. That's the easy part. Hold on a second, that wire kicked into the RV. And you actually don't even have to have that wire in there just as long as you have the dilator. I did that today. Because <laughs> I didn't want the wire into the heart. Mm -hmm. And that sheath's so big, is once you, once you watch it go in, uh, you can start withdrawing the, the dilator as you're okay. pushing it in. You felt that second give yep. up? Okay, so, so now what we'll do is Take the, the dilator and guide wire out, and then we're going to replace this with this clear tui. All right? So okay, get this, get the clear tui on. Just get the clear tui ready. Grab both those this together. This one right here. No, no, no. That one's a lollipop. Mm -hmm. Give that to the doctor. He's going, to, he's going to shove that right back on. Take it all out. So that's Melissa. She's learning. She's loving it. It's her first time to do that. Not her first time to do ECMO, but first time to do this. So this is your stopper here. That's all this is. Sure doing what? So it's like rubbing your tummy and so patting your head at the same time right? to put it in. Pubbed. Yeah, so it should click in. And then we it down every time the shepherd could do Okay. We saved a few steps today. We didn't do a lot of that sure stuff that today. Clear is also tight. Just go ahead yeah. and uh, yeah, perfect. Good. Good. Okay. Good. All Ready? Right. So take that off. If everybody's comfortable, we can uh, we can go on. Right, we go on and we you stop. Open. See if you can get it back. Okay. 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 Uh, Turn it uh, turned up higher. Are you having problems? Yeah, we're not seeing flow. Okay. I've got everything. This is where I accused Joe of having it. the pump <laughs> no, it wasn't backwards. Here. It wasn't I wasn't here. here. <laughs> no, it's coming. It's coming. This is going here. This is going there. This is going there. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Turn it up higher. What, 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 what yeah. How many RPMs yet? Turn the cautery up. Turn the flow up. Turn it up. Turn it up. Now we're going. Okay. Oh, going backwards. Yeah. Pull your pull your thing. More power. Either push it in further. Do something. I just did. There's a lot of resistance. <laughs> what kind of flow do you have? Less than least two negative. Too it's too negative. It's trapped on something. Well, as we found out today, there's no two negative. Okay. Okay. Just cut the 
Dude, it was. Yeah, that or we already got. It was working hard, man. You could see air developing in the in the lines Are today. Are you serious? Yeah, capitating. Turn yeah. it up, man. Turn it up. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good job on the edit. Yes. <laughs> no, we had the flow wrong. We had the flow on. That was so it. the flow wrong. We've got it. That's what we've got. We've got the clock. No, I can't see anything, but that's got to be what it is. Yeah, it was clock going down that line, I think. Oh, that was That was fun. micro bubbles. Bring your RPMs down a little bit. We're good. Yeah, we didn't have Don't micro bubbles, we had macro Where are you at? Today. 2,500. I don't care about that error. It'll go right through. 2,500. It doesn't hurt anything. How far up on this? I forget. Don't turn uh, two, it down. Two. Okay, it's done. You're good. Now I'm getting close. I got five liters. Now you're inflating me like five liters. Somebody give me a flashlight. It was academic at that one. That was academic, man. It was academic. Oh, God. Don't turn your RPMs down, dude. It's up. It's up. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot. Now my flows went down to one liter. Keep it going. It's still, it's still hot. Just keep your RPMs yeah. up. Do you have those prolines? Did you show them? Yes, I have those. Okay, you gotta give me Catherine the prolines. Well, that could be. Yes. Not right now, but. We, I, I, I see material in the, in the trap. Right, right there. I see it. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I think we just sucked the fucker out. <laughs> so you never had the flow wrong. Correct. The flow's right. We never had the flow wrong. We had it on. I thought you said on. Well, I thought you said wrong. Not Wrong. So where are you from again? From my mama. It is not like you. No, it can't have a clot. It has to the Are you flowing at all? Hold on. You can see you can see it in front of it. Okay, Mark, the RV is a little dilated, but it, all I see is smoke to it. So we're good. What are you blowing? Five liters. Five liters. We can just bring the bring the liters down a little bit. We got a lot of uh, yeah, reduce your flow. Yeah, reduce three. We don't need down. Try to get about three. Where's your, your ECMO three? charge? We're trying to look at the PM. So five minutes of okay. full flow. I'm down to two point five. I'm down to one and a half. I'm at one and a half. There you go. So in the background, you can see the TE back there. Looks like a bunch of snow back there. Uh, when we were at five liters of flow, that's not air. It's just differences in temperature of the blood. They call it a bubble study, basically. It's, it's just difference in density and temperature. It's not really air. No. Okay. I think we got it. Oh, I think we got it. Yes. Yeah, because it went looking for it. It's not there. Right. I think I, I already see it. If you can already see the bubble trap now, I can Oh, you see it. No, we were seeing it. Well, look, if you feel comfortable. Look, let me just flush the bubble trap out. You can see yeah, it right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's give her blood back. Hold on a second. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Watching the video. Where's the, okay, this is the. Listen to the commentary. This way to flush it. Okay. okay. So Anything else here. we want to see on this? We good? Okay. Go ahead. Well, you want to see it when it goes through? Can we fast forward it? Yeah. Can we fast forward? <laughs> Let's fast forward to the specimen. Look, I'm flushing it now. There you go. Okay, so oh, yeah. Now, yeah. There we go. Clearing it out. Yeah. Let's just look in there and see. So now the. Everybody gets excited. Listen. What? Everybody goes, oh. Oh my God! You no, know, you can see it on this side. <laughs> oh, I see it right there. Here, it's right here. huge. Right here. Oh, there it is. Right here. There it goes. Right here, Dan. That is big. Yeah, there's the atrium. Look at that. There's Holy. I want to see it. Right <laughs> Am I the only one that did that? Everybody get excited. Look, look, there it is. Oh my God. Look at that. <laughs> That's the part. That's great. <laughs> I did it. Big ass snake. Here, I Melissa. Yeah. She's excited, man. Well, I All think right. that's the end of that video. I think it's the end of your slides. I think so. Okay. All right. So we have some more. Um, well, we did a fungus ball. Can we switch the camera? So we have a camera on? And there's a little technique 
uh, that they showed me, the, the clinical support. I don't know if it was Mike or not. Um, but basically, you take a proline, like a 2 0 proline. Oh, you to get you a catheter? Yeah, if you don't yeah. mind. Can we zoom in on this magic? Is that going to be possible or not? And you can actually kind of rig this to be able to steer it into the it pulmonary off? artery. Yeah. Yeah. You have to take it off. Oh, you have to catheter. Oh, good. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. So I can't see if we're. You're not zoomed in yet. Don't Is there any way to zoom in on this? Yeah. Okay. I think it's going to be a camera this, over there with magic. That one? Take this out that of the way. This one? Okay. There. You got that magic? Yep. So here's the tip. Here's the petals that we're talking about and the little balloon inside. So where the black mark is, now you use a needle driver because it's easier, but you actually just put a stitch right through. It has to be a 48 inch, a long one, or a 36. 48 is better. And so if you figure that you're going to have to use this, you'll have to take it back out and then reinsert the catheter oh. back into the dry sheath. So it goes back in the dry sheath with this beside it, and you're holding on to the strings. And so when you go in, you're up here in the neck, you can make the catheter go up and out the pulmonary alpha tract. Now, it looks like you want to go that way, but you really kind of want to go more anterior because that's really the direction that it goes and then you, while you're doing that you can guide it and push it without pushing it out of the right ventricle or out of the right atrium um, some guys even go into the uh, branches the main pulmonary artery branches when they do that uh, we have not had to do that yet but that's also in there and it's just this little simple technique where you, do, you don't ruin the pedals or anything again as we showed in the second video the uh, meat and potatoes is inside here and can get the clot. The, the flower or the petals is just a, kind of an added nice little version there. So I think that's what causes the, that's what creates essentially the funnel. Right, it make, correct. It, it sort of, so it draws in, you know, it mm -hmm. gets it to the flow to, to the directional right. vortex. And little yeah. pieces and et cetera. So, but this little technique here is. Steerable, yeah. makes it steerable. Makes it, basically makes it a steerable catheter. Mm -hmm. And it's just a simple modification that doesn't require a patent change. Mm -hmm. so. Now, Mike, can you tell me, can you tell us, um, are they, do you guys have, uh, I know you have an angled tip. Right. Can, can you give Mike a, a, a microphone? Give Mike a mic so he can, uh, he can uh, answer from the audience. 20 degree, right. I think so. I think it's okay. 20 degree. That's what they 20 say. degree? I yeah. So. Hmm? Hello. Thanks. Can you hear me? Okay. What were okay. you asking, Joe? Okay. So, the uh, uh, the angle tip that you have. Yes. Um, Tammy thinks it's about twenty degrees. It's a twenty right? degree so angle tip. Yes. Says. And uh, now, are you coming out with a steerable that can go more of a, an acute angle, other than this technique? And those people that you know going into the PA, are they using the already angled with this technique? Like, what are you seeing out there in the world? Um, we are coming out with the generation three. Um, it is in, it's anticipated to come out soon. Okay. As far as, um, the other question, um, that would be better for a clinical specialist, right? Really at this time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. I mean, what would you think would be more, make more sense to use a, an already, an already deflected one for the bend or this one, which, which do you think is easier? Cause this, this seems very malleable, very flexible. Right. And you know, with the wire range, well, I've almost got it bent in half and it's not kinking. Right. It, I think for probably 90 plus percent of the procedures you'd want to do with this, uh, this, this would be fine. If it's got a bend in it, um, and you really maybe could have that bend and be able to steer it more with the angle and not have to do this modification because it is a little bit cumbersome to reinsert while you're holding the string keep it straight and keep it from bunching up and but it's still not the end of the world if you have to use this to steer it but the one thing and you can again while holding tension you can turn it back and move an oh, anterior yes. I see that uh, left and right and if it's got a little but again, this is the whole catheter. So if you have it already angled on the end, that may be beneficial. I mean, we'll see. Mm -hmm. 
So um, on today's case, not unlike the, uh, the one that we did uh, the last time with Min and I, um, we were, we captured this one today extremely fast. I mean, we were, it was within just, just seconds. Right. And, uh, but, but it took a lot longer for it to come through. Come through. I mean, it was literally, we were thinking about alternatives to removing it and because one it was stuck it and in the right is and the other one was to pull it into the sheet itself and then remove the whole thing on block mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i mean you're assuming it's organized uh, and it was uh but it was a little softer than the ones we pulled out it before. was really ugly do we do we have the pictures can you show yeah. the pictures of what we took out today? See, it's obvious, really obviously obviously to to yeah obviously this was iliac vein uh, yeah. the left iliac vein had a branch off of probably the internal iliac. Yeah, you just show the just show the one with that on the on the white towel. I Cause, think because the right yeah. femoral system, iliofemoral there system, was negative by uh, wow. venous duplex, mm -hmm. and she had clot from the left common femoral all the way down. So that's where it broke off. Yes. So, and 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 which brings up the two points for me, which is the first one was we captured it. We were only flowing a liter. And uh, uh, we captured it very quickly. He had inflated the pedals and, before we started flow. And you could tell on the TEE that we had it because whereas the whole thing was moving before, as soon as we initiated it and had no flow, about a third of it just quit moving. Mm -hmm. You could tell it was tethered from another place. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we just gave it time and kept cranking the RPMs up. And, and I got I mean, all we had the some way big bubbles to today. I mean, it was like... Was it, Big, all, was it all consolidating in the RA or was it the RV? Uh, no, it was flipping back and forth flipping across, back. yeah. Wow. Yeah, Another it was going back and forth. It was pretty scary, which brings up my next point. <clears throat> this took us almost three minutes. So I started off at maybe 1,400 RPMs, and then I went yeah. to 2,000, and then I went to 2,200. And I mean, by the time I got to, I went to 3,000 RPMs, that thing was spinning, and that's when he was seeing was all chugging. of that cavitation. Yeah, and actually, yeah. I had to be really careful because the 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 uh, the uh, debris trap was the fluid level had dropped down to probably sixty percent. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. So there was about forty percent left, and I was looking at it, going, "Well, I mean, eh, what's going to happen there?" Yeah, get and, it again. Yeah, well, kind of like your reservoir, <laughs> or just afraid that I was going to cavitate. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. yeah. And then before I really could have a chance to think about it, it just the flow. Well, you just could see, no, I, I literally saw it go I through. Had to turn it down. The, mm. uh, so you could see it go right, right in front of me. But it's, wow. no. but it's extremely important. That was a huge clot. But it's extremely important that people recognize when you capture something like that, you can you cannot turn the flow down. So That's the last the RPMs down. Almost the worst to a point you where you were losing. You, it was obstructing and you were losing volume, Yeah, that's right? why so you weren't flowing. It was right. It was, it was obstructing. Sucked. It was cavitating, yes. It you was were still infusing to the patient, but you weren't getting as much correct. volume. Correct. Getting nothing. Because it was Right. And I said it toothpasted wow. its way. Toothpaste. Just wow. that, that, that constant negative pressure just eventually formed to the tubing. And just was once it gets through this piece and gets up here where it starts to get bigger, it, it just flies. Just flies. It flies. Mm -hmm. So you figured out how to put toothpaste back in the tube today? Clearly, yes, okay. that's what we did, <laughs> exactly. Okay. But this brings up, I think for me, the most important point of all of this is that I don't really believe that it is common, and Mike, you have a mic, so, or Mike, you have a microphone, um, if you wanna add a, into this. I don't really think it's common. Um, it's been published, and Min, you gave a talk on it, I know, earlier, um, and uh, that people have, their circuit designed with an oxygenator in line, ready to do either VV mm -hmm. ECMO if mm -hmm. you needed to, mm -hmm. and continue even with the procedure, just supplemental or something, mm -hmm. or and also bypass the debris trap and the oxygenator, or bypass the debris trap and go through the oxygenator, whichever. Mm -hmm. So that that configuration that we that we yeah. came up with gives you a lot of different options. Mm -hmm. So, Mike, is it common to see that, number one? And then I have a question for Dr. Matoya. It's not that common. Right. No. And, but it is published it by is. others, so other people have recognized it. How do you feel in terms of your comfort level, knowing you have access, this clot is, albeit, you know, the patient has either walked around with it or it's got found. So before that, it didn't go into the PA. 
But today's case, for example, you didn't want to sit on it until 4 o'clock this afternoon. You wanted or no. 5 o'clock. You were like, we have to do this now. So she's a right. time bomb. Correct. What is the risk of not having ECMO ready right then and there for this thing to go ahead and fly downstream and end up as a saddle block embolus? Well, much higher time than not having one, and then but how much time I mean, do you think you really have? Uh, well, the answer to your first question, uh, you really don't really know, uh, but it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and the way this looked on her trans thoracic was pretty scary. And she was obviously had acutely changed in the previous 12 hours and was on high flow of oxygen, uh, showing RV strain. So she'd obviously broken some off and had a pretty bad VQ mismatch. Okay, so she had already actually had a PE. Correct. This would have been, do you think this would have been lethal? Had it, had it, had it oh, gone? Yeah. Well, as, lethal in her for sure, 84, morbidly obese, wow. yeah. obstructive sleep apnea, kind of a bad heart anyway. She extremely thick ventricle, uncontrolled hypertension. So, I mean, this was, she certainly wasn't a candidate for open. You know, so this was ideal for her. If she's going to have a chance, I mean, she still may not do well. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Would uh, you rather have? Would you? Well, she's yeah. She's, and I don't want to open her chest. I don't want to put her back together. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, so. Well, I mean, the recovering on that is ridiculous. Well, I mean, the, well, the, and that's just the obvious benefits of this. Uh, the other thing, but to your second question, um, today was kind of one of those where because we were trying to uh, get better video of the clinical part doing it, doing the case, um, I couldn't really see very well the, um, the fluoroscopy images. So the catheters actually went into the RA. Mm -hmm. And so it, it had broken it off. I mean, VA ECMO is essential at that point to offload the right heart, keep it from completely failing, and also to oxygenate the patient. And if I have to crack her chest and get in, if you don't have that available, it's she she wouldn't have had any chance. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Certainly, so if you've got a young person, you want to have. There, there's no disadvantage to not having VA ECMO mm -hmm. available. But would you? Agree, In other words, you an oxygenator. A separate circuit, completely separate, or would you prefer as we did it, which is. Integrated what, into the I think what you can do is you can slam them on VV just to oxygenate because that's the first thing if you mm -hmm. in, buy some yeah. time because yeah. you've already got the access yep. and you already got dilated up you just got to change out the catheters mm -hmm. or you can VV with what you got stick an arterial line in and you can take about 30 seconds to clamp clamp cut cut that's hook it up right. and just do it that way that's the other option mm -hmm. you just well, leave you, and you, leave you, your you and leave your angiovac your access. and leave your angiovac as your right uh, access. Actually, no. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you didn't even talk about that today because the last case, that case we did at that other hospital, the one previously and the one today, you stuck the femoral artery, put a wire in. Yeah, she was. Ready. Yeah, she was, was, in the femoral yeah, artery, she, you had already done that? Yeah, because if I, I didn't want to lose, she had a pulse, obviously. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to lose her and not have a pulse. She was a small lady. Uh, she had already had this code. Mm -hmm cardiac, respiratory, neurologic, otherwise. Mm -hmm. And her heart on echo looked bad. And so I thought, we actually thought that if she didn't do well with this, we could treat her PEs with VA ECMO, mm -hmm. which is a treatment for PE. She was not a candidate for a sternotomy and digging them out. I mean, they were all subsegmental, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. subsegmental and peripheral. There was nothing central mm -hmm. except for what was in the heart. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't going to be able to get in there and squeeze out the lungs and get a bunch of stuff out and help her. So it was just ride her out. So, so yeah, so that's why we had her set up for VA. Plus, we were at another hospital, and we, we didn't want her to, you know, we wanted everything in line. And, in that, yeah, the one, and that that one, that, the that, one from today. Right. right. The one today, I didn't put it, you know, her LV was not that bad, and uh, we, that was not our biggest concern mm -hmm. with her. Now, um, not but, in we're, but we're available to do it. Right. And I'd already stuck her femoral artery trying to get access, mm -hmm. so I knew where it was, and it was pretty crunchy, so I knew I could get in it. Mm -hmm. So you were talking about not a lot of people Thanks. are doing, that, or Mike was speaking to, not a lot of people are doing the ECMO combined circuit with the angiovac. Are they, is it a standard of care to have the ECMO circuit available? Are these being done at places where they don't have ECMO circuits? I mean, yes, yes and yes. Uh, and Mike, you can add to this discussion, but um, from what I understand, yes and yes. Do I think it's a standard of care? I think it certainly should be a standard of care. 
Um, but we're however, not there yet. Other places to, aren't necessarily doing that as a standard of care, correct? Right, correct. But this is a v, this is essentially a VV ECMO without an oxygenator mm -hmm. uh, until you need the oxygenator. And mm -hmm. I think that from my perspective, um, if it was uh, if it's tethered to something like it's on the tricuspid valve and you're you know dealing with that issue and I, it's tethered. Um, I'm probably not as inclined to want to put an oxygenator in line. However, it's so easy to do mm -hmm. that now that I've done it again, this next trip, and we've done the talk, we drew the diagram, we sort of know how to do this. Mm -hmm. um, I'm beginning to wonder if, you know, just from a, uh, a patient a patient safety perspective that we shouldn't do it on every case. I guess my feeling is I think we should. I guess about my bottom line is, you know, I'm concerned about cost. Everybody's concerned about cost, and an ECMO circuit costs more than, you know, it's more than just a dollar or two. So, in the interest of saving money, I guess what I do it on every case, um, if it was if it was truly a. If it was me, if it was you, mm -hmm. or Vicky, yes, yeah, I'd you're gonna put it on there. That's how. You, that's how. Yeah, that's how you have to look at. Mm -hmm. it. Right. Mm -hmm. I'd want an option. But you get there. dinged, you know. So you know but the routine. At the end of the day, it's still a simplified circuit, but it allows you to have access. Angel back system, angel back verse slash ECMO. It gives you all the options yeah, you can do. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know why? I mean, sometimes you just need uh, while they recover. I mean, you're releasing all kinds of, in, in the words of our, you know, our ancestors, evil humors. I mean, mm -hmm. there's something That's to be right. said for, you know, changing somebody's circulation. If this is a septic type situation and they dilate up or they you break something off and become hypoxic, I mean, you know, yeah, they think there's no, exactly. yeah, this, we know, we know how this goes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've seen everything. Right. You turn these patients, they code. Yes. I think, yes, but I, I think, too. So just, uh, there's nothing, I, I, I would be hacked if I didn't have an oxygenator available and then, and then something happened. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you guys think having the ECMO circuit there and just changing it out uh, with the cannulas, or do you think integrating it as we've done, as we've chosen to do now, into the actual angioback circuit makes more sense? The, the downside, I think, to having it in the circuit already is that, well, the upside is it's faster at that mm -hmm. point, so you can just turn it on. Mm -hmm. The downside is that when you're going to the ICU, you're gonna have to convert to another circuit. So, because that circuit wouldn't be appropriate because you'd have all the other accoutrements that come with it, the filter yeah. and the mm -hmm. so forth. You'd have a lot of whys going everywhere, and I think that might make it a little bit cumbersome for the ICU. So you would have to switch to another circuit at some point. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Eventually. you'd get on ECMO, rescue the patient much faster. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important part. Important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Patient care. Agreed. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Gentlemen, anything? I just think it's interesting that we've taken a, you know, when the, these things first came out, they were to, to basically suck the clot out. And yep. now the fact that uh, surgeons and perfusionists get a hold of it, we've now changed it into modified ECMO circuits. Mm -hmm. I, think that's, I think that's just kind of the way we do, isn't it? Yes, I agree. Yep. That's the way we think. That's the way we do because we're thinking of, you know, not only is this an application that we can do the primary treatment, if something goes wrong we've got a secondary treatment ready and mm -hmm. ready to go I, th I, th I think it's a a real boon to uh, the angiovac uh, you know circuit There's, we thinking this way and the increase in the application absolutely mm -hmm. yeah. well i'm gonna throw mike in i know we never opened the phone lines and i apologize for that everybody there in web world forgive me just send me your nasty emails and i'll try to answer them um but uh uh, uh mike you still there so I was con I was talked to the other day, and I'm, I'm not familiar with the technology at all, so I'd really like you to discuss it. Apparently, there is some device that is similar to this that I, supposing loses less blood, but it goes into a waste container, and it's, a, it's basically a similar thing to remove unwanted intravascular material. Um, some, do you know anything about this? I don't at this time. I haven't okay. studied on it yet. Have you heard of it? There's some other device, but only they don't use, it's not a, there's no return. It goes into a waste container. And Peter it mentioned something vacuum. in his talk, but he didn't name Peter it. Did. He just said there's another, other similar devices, uh, platforms out there, mm -hmm. but he didn't 
go into like detail. Cardi for cardiology applications. I guess. Things. I think it's crazy to to to. He to, didn't to, elaborate. To, to, Penumbra is that the one? Penumbra. I don't know. It could be. That's a know. cardiology yeah. based mm. for yeah. peripheral clot. Mm. I've, I'll used, bet I've that's used it. it. Yeah, I mean it's. I don't see how to have, it, have the application for this. Is it small? Is it smaller? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this case, it, you don't even think that would work. Oh, no. Okay, because mm -hmm. I don't know of any other device out there. ECOS is another. An ECOS is another. EKOS. Does that remove or does that mm -hmm. just infuse? And so is that, that more this lady is, this, Yeah, it is. It's more. Per, so this lady is probably going to get a filter tomorrow and ECOS. So for, for her, her legs. For her legs, her correct. Legs. So those are peripheral yeah. devices. Well, no, you, they... Do them up in the the pulmonary mm -hmm. arteries as well. They do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a smaller yeah. catheter, but it's more a little more maneuverable. But it can't get this. Right. It can't get large things. So like that's their kind of concern. Over like a long period of time so, so it lasts. I, like, do they put the din and leave it there no, for no, a long no, time, no, or no. is it just a, no. a one-shot operation or procedure? It's, yeah, it's just a labor-intensive procedure. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the. Um, and so that was what we actually discussed in this case. That was, you know, I got consulted by a cardiologist. She talked to her peripheral specialist about ECOS. And then he said, you know, you need to call Matoyer because of what's in her heart. And so I called him. I said, look, I, I think Angiovac, we're ready to go. We can do it right now. Angiovac for the heart. And then you deal with the other later. He said, yeah, sounds yeah. great. And so she'll get a filter and, and some either, probably not catheter directed thrombolysis, maybe. But the ECOS and then, because you remove the clot burden, and then you can do TPA type stuff. But she, now she's got a little incision in her neck. She's got a little cut in her groin, so she'll probably bleed from that. So it'll probably just be suction and keep her on anticoagulation with the ECOS. Uh, her leg, to be honest with you, is because of her size, it's hard to tell if she had significant swelling. She's just kind of big everywhere, but uh, definitely getting a filter. Did she still yeah. have some peripheral clots? Oh, yeah, from her left femoral down. That's why I'm. You need to know where your return's going to be. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was it, convenient for me that it was the right because right. reaching over her was going to be difficult mm -hmm. for the left. But that's why she's going to get a filter. It's okay. Right, because mm -hmm. she still has clot burn. Yes, yeah, so maybe like we'll see. You know, it may just be her if, if her leg's not threatened or anything. I mean, it may just they may just put the filter in. We'll see. Her leg didn't look that bad actually. <clears throat> but she'll end up on. You know, one I, of those I, uh, Zarelto or Pradaxa or something. Right. Of. And just real quick, we talked about this before we close. The I would say one of the other things this really expands the uh, application for, and, and you've already thought about this in Web World if you haven't heard about it already, uh, besides pick line thrombus, et cetera, and endocarditis. I mean, it's been done on aortic valves. Are you kidding? I think there's been one done on aortic valve. Okay. That's off label, but I know, I know. I'm not wow. going to say who did it. But. Peter talked about it today. Yeah, yeah he talks today. a little bit yeah. about that. And um, I mean, I mean, you got some like, like maybe a fibroblastoma, something that's flipping little, giving you little strokes, and nothing structurally wrong with the aortic valve. Go in and suck that off, and you right. say the guy's stenotomy. I mean, I always felt bad. I've done a couple of those. You feel bad taking some young guy with a fibroblastoma, going there and snipping it off and closing them up. Mm. I mean. Same thing with mixomas. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, we were keep we were following gonna... that up, suck those suckers off. I mean, this is just crazy stuff. It's um, it would it would be applicable to a lot a right atrial mixoma to be able to take absolutely. it out. Absolutely. Yeah, we were talking about. We this were wondering earlier. whether or not the tissue itself in more of a tissue or a cyst oh, it'll situation. Come back. It may, it'll probably come back. But you can take it off grown, off the stem and everything. Uh, it'll it will take take it off. It'll take it off. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. And the anticoagulate them afterwards, obviously, right. but mm -hmm. it'll probably come back. But you just follow them. I mean, I'd rather have three or four of these in 20 years than a sternotomy. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, other applications, AICDs, uh, immunocompromised patients. Um, when I first came out, it seemed like I had one every three or four months with a fungus ball on their pacemaker wires. Mm -hmm. You open them up, they're sick as a dog. You open them up. You're taking care not to, you know, you got to change in instruments and gloves and gowns and then pulling the catheter out and you get the fungus ball off and they look great for about six weeks and then they come back, pus their chest out and they're dead. Oh. It, because their sternum gets candid yeah. in it. And so this way you go in and you suck off the clot burden with the infection and then you can safely remove the leads Leaks. through the pocket. Yeah. Same thing with Tessios, um, you know, dialysis type catheters. 
because you know if it's on there you pull it it's with the PE yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. you suck it off then you pull it off great whether it's infected or not mm -hmm. it's coming out oh it's yeah. it's pretty cool stuff I wish you were getting one of those I wish ever you would get those once a week now well, we need more cases I think we just need to send out a newsletter because they're out there yeah. yep need to figure that out and some people don't want to do it I love doing it we need to petition the uh, board too to accept it as a case. It is. Is, is it? A, I was asking. It is, it is a case. This is a full case. Is it? Really? Yes. I did not realize. That's why that. I ran and did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my> okay. <laughs> Does it? Okay. Now it all makes sense. <laughs> it all makes sense. It's all it. coming together. <laughs> does anybody? Uh, does anybody have any further comments? Do you have any other information to add? No, uh, he answered the question about the myxoma because mm -hmm. I was uh, considering that, and I said, you know, you've got a you got a patient with all the comorbidities they may have, and maybe even a redo sternotomy. You know, you mm -hmm. just don't you don't have to do it. Well, you let me throw a curveball at you. Would you do no do this with a left atrial myxoma? No. Yeah. Uh, through the, uh, do a transeptal? Not right now. No. 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 We I'll, talked I'll, about I'll, that too. Yeah, we talked about this too. <laughs> Because that's at least, you know, well, now what if you, what if you used, what if you put in. Well, you know what, I'll take that back. If it was somebody who could not tolerate their chest being open, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, wait, no, it gets, it gets more interesting. What if you put in the sentinel, the tri-guard, or the, not the sentinel, but the tri-guard. That, that shield. That shield, and put well, that up there. Mixoma, and what's it, yeah, you don't, you, you, that's not. That's not my. That's my biggest concern with a myxoma, but you know, long term, it's not your biggest concern. Okay. Does that make sense? Sort of. Well, it's a. It's a tumor, dude. Well, I know. Okay. <laughs> but you know, so. Okay. So, I mean, you're you're concerned about 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 sending it anywhere. Mm -hmm. So you don't want that to happen. Correct. I mean, there's. It's obvious the flow strong enough that it's going to catch it and mm -hmm. suck it through a straw. Mm -hmm. But oh, yeah. the right, but you would do it with the right side. So it doesn't that have the same paradigm? Mm, man, that's a tough one, dude. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, look, I just, I'm asking, okay? I don't know. I'm, yeah. Thought I'd ask. Okay, Lungs apparently. are a good filter. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Any other, any other questions mm -mm. before we go? Nope. No. Okay. Well, I want to say something very quickly to everybody. And that is, uh, and put the whole, and put everybody up. I want to thank Mike Brown, I want to thank Tammy Sparacino, I want to thank Min Tran for managing all of this in my absence. I heard it was fantastic, you guys did a great job, and it really makes me, all of you, it makes me feel, I, I feel really good that uh, I didn't have to be here. <laughs> And that feels good to they me. They probably thought the same thing about you. <laughs> and I want to thank you, too. I want to thank you for, uh, for, for doing this case and yep. jamming over here to finish oh, up you, on yeah, it. Oh, yeah, and... So, and giving me a ride, yes, I know. Because his Boy Scout project, a Tesla, died in the garage. <laughs> Boy Scout project. And he's... Yeah, that was... And then traffic was slow, little blue hairs. You know, he was panicking. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. I never panic. Never, never. I'm always cops. Just yeah. always very level. <laughs> yeah. You can't even tell when I'm upset. All right.